Network. Dr. Renuka is PhD, MSc, BSc honors, PIE, MA, AF, MEA. She is named Leaders for Development, Governor and Henrik Thomas Cresto, and was awarded the Global SDGs Woman Ambassador Award of the year 2022. And the topic in which she will be sharing our valuable knowledge is. Redefining yourself, turning challenges into opportunities. Over to you, Dr. Renuka. Thank you very much, Shelley, for setting the stage. It's very nicely presented by you, and I will use your few points as well. Thank you very much. So, yeah, thank you very much to Global Council for the promotion uh, of international trade and especially to Ananya for being our host and for Santosh Ganesh, who is the organizer. So huge, con and also huge congratulations to every woman worldwide who have done a difference to make this happen on International Women Day. So I am Renuka Thakur, and I'm a founder of Global Sustainable Futures Progress to Partnership Network. And let me tell you something or a little bit about myself. I was in construction industry with my husband for 20 years back in India before 19, uh, 2005 uh, when I moved to UK. And at that time, I had two daughters who were already in university, one already graduated, and both are aerospace engineers. And that's the very big connection we have with Shelley. And they are usually known as, uh, they, are, they are popularly, I mean, lovely known as space sisters in the space industry. And I, because I saw a plenty of things as a materialistic person back with construction industry, when I moved to UK, I found myself redefining into something where I wanted to con contribute to ecology, or you can say the ecological capital of our economy, which is environment. And I redefined myself as a student. And at one point, my younger daughter and me were in the same class. And I did my, I invested specially into my education, research, and work conditions in a way that I did my BSc in environment management, sustainability in build environment practices to bring my education and my experience together, and then did my PhD in housing. But while I was doing my PhD, I understood that leadership accountability and ownership for 
sustainability or to do some something around environment and sustainability is so much important than having an index or a quantitative analysis. And that is where I thought uh, I must be developing a stakeholder engagement model. And that model advises us to engage individually, organizationally, and interorganizationally to make the change and to change our governing rules and make a better performance. And that is what I'm applying on my uh, theoretically, my understanding on my network today, which I have this Global Sustainable Futures Progress Through Partnership Network. I won't go through the video over here. There is five minute video, which explains my vision, objectives, and all uh, other things, uh, but uh, I have put a link. If you can spare five minutes, uh, please do to understand what GSFN is. We are always welcoming everyone to join. It is free and innovative platform. It is a global platform and there is no uh, requirement for you to join. And uh, in that video, we say that uh, because it was recorded long before, uh, I mentioned that I have 800 coordinators, but today we have 3,000 coordinators in 147 countries. And I'm very proud to getting such a support from the global community who are enthusiastic about sustainability practices in the world. We do several programs, but lately I have been uh, announcing these two programs or so just to give a snapshot that what we do uh, I will also talk about more things uh, coming in, in the later slides, but uh, this is only for everyone to understand that we support international uh, research congress and especially we support uh, low and medium income countries to uplift their presence in the global world. So this is one example and it is soon coming on 17th of March resilience and sustainability through global transformation in new normal. And here our all CN, uh, GSFN coordinators are taking part in one or the other way in supporting such activities. Likewise, we are also coming up with educational programs where everyone is invited. And here again, we have a model which allows low and medium income country, student, uh, country participants to engage with such uh, educational opportunities. And we are providing this free for uh, unemployed, uh, we are free for students and free for the careers. careers. So, and, and they, uh, they are sponsored by actually uh, participants from high income countries. So we are having a sharing model over here. So these are the things. So let me go into the main topic today about redefining yourself, turning challenges into opportunities. And this might, and few things what I share might be applicable on an individual level as well as organizational level. And I want to share only three main points that when you re redefine or how you redefine. So first you need to articulate yourself with a bold and flexible vision. And I will explain soon what I mean by that. And, oh, and you need to cultivate a culture of innovation within yourself. Uh, that is, you have to make a climate of innovation around you and your organization or, and lead change with empathy and integrity. So let us see what this entails. So here, when I'm talking about setting up a vision, we are thinking of future and we must look at both technological change and global change. Until now, according to Frank Dyna from Tata Consultancy Services, we were observing these changes or addressing these changes uh, issues separately. 
but there are plenty of overlaps and plenty of things that connect the dots. And therefore we need to combine these two views and see how we can combine and overcome the, I think I was mentioning of um, uh, social changes within this black color block. And so decline in fertility rates, uh, aging population and fall in working age population, these all are very interlinked. And what it shows that at the same time, this automation of these uh, automations uh, of the interlink shows that um, there is a growing concern over these social changes related to technological unemployment. How and when we look at these technological functions or changes, we see that the automation of everything will help us to address this problem. But we never know, we can never uh, understand that whether we, these uh, issues would be, uh, we will be addressing these issues or we will be contributing towards these issues. And therefore we have to be, very flexible and adaptable and always reimagining ourselves with the current issues or uh, addressing them as we go on and this is a classic example that you know zoom has now worth more than seven biggest airlines uh, due to covid and of course that is returning back to their normal but still we, uh, we have been in our practice of meeting people through Zoom. So this is one of the example. And therefore, what we have in our vision as our network, and as I mentioned, we need to articulate a bold and flexible vision. And the vision of our network is that through Global Sustainable Futures, Progress to Partnership Network, we want to play a leading role in creating an inclusive, collaborative, innovative, and engaging platform for early career researchers and like targeted stakeholders, including startups and entrepreneurs, supported by experienced senior researchers and business leaders, where everyone can share in their research, innovation, visualization, and enthusiasm in parallel to network success. Now I will talk about the another point which I made that we need to cultivate a culture of innovation. And what I mean by that, there, there are leadership, the traditional leadership, which are uh, of, coming from the top. And these leadership are hierarchical and they are doubted now that they would work. At the same time, we are also having inter, inter, uh, independent leadership, which means that each one is expert in their own self. But however, there is a lot of multidisciplinary uh, things going on. And therefore, we will need the people to engage with each other and form a collaborative uh, culture to connect with each other. And therefore, it going forward i think we will need to have a culture which is interdependent which means that we have a shared objectives we are able to have our own expertise but at the same time we are able to share and grow and we become big and maybe bold and like uh, uh, forward looking and and collectively be ready for innovation. And that is what I think we need to have as a culture. And this culture will be inclusive, will be uh, supporting our diversity, will be also able to have plenty of expertise so that we can overcome any adversity uh, in the future. And that is why we also have a collaborative culture and we have created this deliberately, intentionally. And this particular culture will grow only when we evolve entirely and, and demolish command and control hierarchy leadership. We have to have a mindset where 
this environment of interdependent connection is created. And in a way that a true collaborative and shared knowledge, people think that this is our, people think that we have to be together and we have to solve the problems together. And that is the culture we need to create. And finally, let me tell again about this um, uh, cult leadership culture framework. Generally, before pandemic, it was identified or, or generally we had hierarchy uh, uh, leadership, which was like dependent. It, it had dependent uh, indicators such as, you know, risk and conflict uh, awareness. The knowledge within the organization was not shared widely. It was protected saying that it is our, uh, our property. We should not be sharing and or we should not be having others to know our secrets. Over that, we went over that and we also got into leadership of in the, uh, independent leadership where People become diverse within their own expert, which I already mentioned. However, a lot of them need to converge at some point to make a collaborative uh, leadership. And the third one, interdependence, has a unique uh, points in that, that is collaboration mindset, shared knowledge, and both uh, thinking as an uh, coming together and navigating the complexity of today's society. And this leadership is like a collective activity. And I want to share how then it becomes a culture within your leadership uh, uh, model. And if you have such various expertise coming together to solve a shared problem, then that becomes a culture within yourself. And each one is a part of your leadership. And it gives you an access to a wide range of possibilities, alternative future scenarios. And that is what uh, you have to be capable of. And finally, I would like to share how we have implemented such leadership within our GSFN. So what we are doing, uh, everyone has joined me uh, since 2020, January 2020. Uh, however, we were looking for a governance structure where we can recognize each one as a leader. And this is what we have come up with. Um, as Shelley already mentioned that, you know, you need, uh, she, uh, 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 she had various opportunities. And here too, in this governance uh, structure, we are providing various opportunities for each one to apply their own expertise and in a way that they can become and uh, they can flourish and they can uh, uh, build their capacity in their own expertise. And what we have done, we have done, uh, we have adopted SDGs, that is sustainable development goals, one to 17 as our framework. So we ask people that in which SDG would you your work fall in? So they might say SDG six, and then they would say, uh, and then we have four domains. We work mainly in four domains, which is education, research, enterprise or business, and uh, community. So you can choose your domain, so for me, it can be research. For someone who is a lecturer, can be uh, uh, education. Or someone who is a student can be education. Or someone who is working in waste, water, and so on. So they can put that way. And uh, uh, so if it is business, then they can put business. And then uh, we have to uh, go into levels that uh, I, I completely understand we, uh, it is my just slide, uh, last slide. And then we have to go into levels such as global, uh, country level, university level or home level or a regional level and so on. And then the last three words we write down specific to their own activities. And we provide these batches 
for them to be recognized as one of the GSFN coordinator, but also to provide them an opportunity to- Dr. Share. Reduka? Yes, uh, I will just finish. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will provide these batches. And that is what we are trying to do through uh, interdependence uh, leadership model and bring transformative change in GSFN. So thank you very much for listening to me. Together we can make this happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Renuka, for your time.